Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and this is a special Kickstarter preview for a game called Cristallo. And this game was created by Liberty Kiefer and is published by Lightheart Games. Now, because this is a Kickstarter preview, this game has not gone to Kickstarter just yet. This video will be releasing quite a bit in advance of the Kickstarter, actually, to get you guys prepared for the upcoming Kickstarter. If you're looking for information on when that Kickstarter begins, you'll be able to find that in the description below. Now, for those of you that have never heard of this game before, this game got a ton of recognition in the solo community behind the scenes as a print and play before finally making its way here through to Kickstarter and then out to everyone in the board gaming hobby. So what's really exciting about this one is it's an up and comer. It's one that has had little eyes on it. And I'm really excited for this being that it's a small footprint of a game, but I believe the gameplay here is something special and interesting for individuals who want to pick up something that is not going to cost an obscene amount of money and also is going to be pocket size. As you can see here that this particular game comes with at least in this prototype which is something else I'd like to mention that everything you are seeing here is for sure in prototype form but you're seeing a bag which was placed inside of a drawstring bag which is extremely nice. Uh, it also has a tag here explaining the game. We'll talk about that in a second. The rule book is right here. Crystals that go along with it and then a deck of cards. So in terms of its components, very simplistic, but also a nice touch by adding some really oversized gems that look fantastic. Cristallo is a solo puzzle abstract card game with a light fantasy theme. Explore the cavern lair of the wicked black dragon by placing cards. Free six magical creatures by creating crystal sets. And if you should succeed with that task, trap the dragon in his own cave. Collect treasure along the way and you may emerge a wealthy champion. Cristallo is played with a deck of 54 illustrated cards you can see right here and we're going to dive into that box very soon as well as the gameplay and 18 gems that you can see here on the right hand side of the screen. It runs for about 20 to 30 minutes. Another reason that I gravitated towards Cristallo was because during 2018, the Solo Print and Play Contest Awards awarded Cristallo a number of first place finishes in many different categories, as well as second place in a handful of others. I want to go over a couple of those now because it's really cool to hear all the things it won for. It won for the best overall game, best original artwork, Best Graphic Design, Volunteer Prize, The Best New Artist, The Best New Designer, The Best Puzzle Abstract Game. In second place, it came in for the Best Regular Print and Play Build. Second place for Best Game Designed in Contest Time Frame. Second place finish for Best New Solitaire Designer and then a second place finish for best artist overall. So it really did rack in quite a number of high, high rankings across the board there. Again, even more solidifying a reason for me to look into this further. Something important to note is that this is a Kickstarter preview, so because of that, the disclaimer always is mentioned here on Rolling Solo that the components can change and may change, and even the rules may change for what you see in this video versus what happens during the Kickstarter launch and maybe even afterwards. This is to give you a good idea so you can become informed as to whether or not this is something you'd like to pick up, but just be aware of components, cards, rules, that could all potentially change in different ways, whether major or minor. Now what we see here in front of us right now is the rule book open to page number one where we can see a listing of components, the story, as well as the card types and terms, an overview of play phases, and it goes on for about 10 pages total. It's not a large rule book, and in terms of the size of my hand, it's actually smaller than my hand. So if we go ahead and remove the crystals out of the way, I'm just going to flip a couple pages so you get a rough idea of what it looks like inside the rule book in terms of the illustrations throughout it. It's actually pretty well laid out, very easy to consume. And in terms of total time, you're probably looking at less than a few minutes to basically get through this, maybe five to 10 if you're a quick reader. Um, and you've got it with 10 pages total here. And then after that, you're gonna move into a scoring table, which really only matters at the end of your game. You've got the adventure log here, uh, which again, you can track using your name, treasure, title, and score. And you've got another couple of those over here. So overall, not a massive rule book, which is fantastic, gets you right into the game quickly. So without further ado, let's get this game set up and start showing you some of that gameplay. The first step of the setup is to separate the six creature cards and the two black dragon cards and the key card from the rest of the deck. So you can see here we've got the two black dragon cards, six total creature cards, and the key card 
for reference. In this next step, you're going to place the six creature cards face up in a row at the top of the play area, just close enough so that you can still comfortably reach them. Next, place three gems on the orbs at the bottom of each of the creature card, as you can see above, and then place the black dragon cards face down off to the side. So we'll just place these two cards face down and just off to the side up here. Next, you're going to shuffle the remaining cards and then deal nine of these cards into a separate pile. And you're going to set those aside because they're going to be used for the second phase of trapping the black dragon, should you succeed with liberating the creatures to start. Then we're going to place the remaining cavern cards, these ones right here, face down in a pile in front of you. This will be your draw pile. Keep your key card handy, so I'll put this within easy view for myself, and we'll also reference this during the playthrough. And we're ready to play. The first step is to draw a card from the top of the draw pile and place it face up in the center of the play area. Next, we draw another card and place it so that any one of the crystals line up, whether it be horizontally, vertically, next to any one of the crystals on the first card. The second card may be placed side by side or partially covering the card already in place, as shown in a bunch of configurations within the rulebook. Here is a close-up of the rulebook and the seven different types of configurations that you can do when you're deciding to pair up your crystals. As you can see here, they're pretty wild different. You've got some that are horizontal, some that are vertical, and those are more of the norm. But then you also have overlapping options as well. And this is really where the variability of your options comes into play. There's another couple of rules I want to go over before we continue on placing our second card here to match the crystal. First off, you may not place an orb. You must place one crystal next to another crystal. So as you can see here on the card that we first pulled originally, we got two crystals on this card and two orbs. You cannot be placing an orb it must be a crystal also crystals do not need to be the same shape or color and we're going to talk more about that in a little bit once a card has been placed it can't be removed now we're going to talk quickly about creating a set because remember we need to create crystal sets and to create a crystal set you will need to make a square with three crystals and one colored orb the crystals may be combined in any of the four ways shown on your key card and they're also explained in the rule book let's take a closer look at that key card in order to figure out how we can combine and make crystal sets so here are the four ways that you can create a crystal set. You can have the same color and the same shape, that counts. You can have the same color and different shapes. There are actually different shape of crystals. You can have different color and the same shape. Or you can have different colors and different shapes. So any of those four combinations are considered valid. So to sum it up, for each trait, shape, and color, all crystals must be all the same or all different. So here's an example straight from the rule book, four of them actually, of all the different ways that you can go about creating these crystal sets, just as a visual representation without me actually having to use the cards to show you this. But basically they're all overlapping, whether horizontally, vertically, they're overlapping each other under, over top, all that good stuff in order to create that square. And as long as one of those key conditions are met of the four different ways you can do this, you can create a crystal set. Now comes the exciting part of freeing the creatures themselves. So once you have created a crystal set, as you can see on screen here, three crystals and one orb, note the color of the orb that completes the square created with your three crystals. That orb is now lit up. Remove a gem from the creature card of that color, so in this case it would be the Firefox as shown in the example here, and place that gem on the orb that completes the square. The orb on the creature card is now dark. So there is a nice representation of that exact action right here on screen showing a crystal set's been created with an orange orb. That orange orb relates back to the Firefox. So when that crystal set is completed, which it is, and you can see that there, one of the crystals comes off the creature card and is placed where the orb is, thus removing one of the bonds from the creature. And once all three bonds are removed from a creature, uh, one of the six creatures, uh, then you have freed that particular creature. Now you have to, as an objective free 
all six creatures. So you're going to be trying to remove bonds across six creatures with three bonds on each of them. So you're going to be creating quite a bit of combinations in order to do that. That will get you successfully through phase number one. So you're continuing until you have freed six or you've run the cards. Now let's talk about treasure bonuses. So there are nine treasure cards among the cavern cards. These treasures may be collected by lighting up both of the two orbs on the card. The more treasure you collect, the better your final score will be. The treasures come in three types though. They come in riches, in magic, and battle. And collecting all three treasures of that one type is gonna gain you a unique bonus, which again is referenced here on this reference card, making it easy to remember. So if you gain all the richest treasures, you're gonna add one treasure to your final score, making your score even better. If you gain all of the magic treasures, you're gonna remove one gem from any creature or add one gem to the black dragon. If you gain all of the battle treasures, you're gonna draw one extra card during the black dragon phase. All right, now the last part of the rule book here talks about trapping the black dragon and the setup for that, but we wanna get through the first phase first before we start talking about trying to trap a dragon uh, because we'll get to those rules when we actually do get to them. So first off, let's see if we can actually free all of the creatures here in this cavern to start it off. So as we talked about earlier, I did go ahead and draw the first card and we know it's this one right here in the center of the table. I've just drawn this one as well and we know that we do have a matching crystal here that we could potentially use to try to start building towards Towards a crystal set. So I've gone ahead and put my second card into play. I put it just to the left of the first card that I pulled. And again, they always have to be side by side, whether vertical or horizontal. They can overlap cards and things like that. But as of right now, this is going to work perfect for me as I'm building out a set. This particular orb would be the one that would get the crystal. If I can get another orange one right here, it would actually correlate to the unicorn. Allow me to take one crystal here and put it on this orb. In order to get this as a valid crystal set, we would have to be going after currently the same color, different shape approach as we get the three crystal, two crystal, one crystal, we've got three, two, we need the one right here, which we could do by overlapping things. So that would be the interesting thing we'd be going for, but again, we don't know how these cards are gonna pan out as we go, and we've also got two new crystals in the outskirts to build off of as well. The next card pulled off the top of the deck was this one, and what's really cool about it is we got a single crystal, so a different shape essentially. I'll be referring to these as single crystals, double crystals, and triple crystals throughout this playthrough just so you guys can kind of stay aware of the different sh uh, shape sizes that we're dealing with here. So basically got a single crystal that matches the same color. So I can go ahead as a valid configuration and put this like this, creating a four right here. This is one of the crystal sets and it's gonna follow this one right here, which is same color, different shape. So that's pretty awesome. We get that right away. And then whatever's in the orb itself is the type of crystal that we grab and place right there. So we've already got ourselves activated one orb on the board, which is great. And we go and draw the next card. Next card coming in looks like this. It's got two orbs on it uh, for two of the different creatures and one single red crystal. How are we gonna use this one? I'm gonna go ahead and place this one like this. So again, as long as your crystals are adjacent to each other, this is a valid move. The reason why I did this is because I really have just opposites on the bottom edge, and this one basically has a blank corner, so I might as well go ahead and try to merge this one in as best I can without trying to expand this thing too far away. And as you can see here, what's really cool is you can go ahead and activate another orb that uses the same crystals as uh, an orb that's currently activated. So for instance, this one here has an activated orb. These crystals are the ones that did so, but these crystals can still be used uh, even partially for another orb to activate. So that's a really interesting thing to note as well. So the next card off the top of the deck is this one right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and literally just slot it in like this, adjacent to that crystal. So we can start creating some type of cluster right in this area. Now, the other cool thing is it has availability for us to basically expand outwards here. So eventually I'll have to move the camera in different uh, angles to capture what I'm doing, but that's okay. We'll change it as we go. One thing really interesting is that this orb here and this three crystal piece, when I was looking at this, I got excited originally because I thought I might've been able to somehow bring those over here and create another formation of four crystals. Again, you can always use, uh, I shouldn't say four crystals, but three crystals and an orb. 
You can always use crystals, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that have already been used to activate an orb. So I could use these two and get something like this, as so long as this one was a single crystal, and put it right here, and that would create another crystal set, uh, which would have been pretty cool. We can hope to find that eventually, but I guess we won't find out until we pull it. So we're going to the next card. Are you serious? That is awesome. I got exactly what I was talking about. I'm using that right away. So we're going to go ahead here and put that right into play. So I'm going to have to move things around, but that fits just barely like that. But you can see you're a perfect example of those activating. So again, I'm going to get to uh, take another one off the unicorn. So that's the creature that keeps getting these ones out there. So we're already, we're almost one away, we're only one away, I should say, to freeing the unicorn out of the cavern. So that's pretty awesome. We're doing pretty good so far, and we're setting ourselves up nicely because you can even see right here there's potential for another situation like that to occur if we can find another one of these two crystals and land it right in there all right so the next card that just came out of the pile was a card that looks like treasure and it certainly does it's coins and if we take a look at this treasure bonus card here for reference you've got three different sets you can accumulate we talked about this riches add one treasure to your final score so basically if we're able to obtain all three of the items how do you obtain those items well we're trying to activate both of the orbs that are on a treasure card and then we've obtained it we're going to have to do that across the three different treasures which means we'll be activating a total of six orbs to get the ability below one thing that's really interesting to note though is that you can't collect the treasure if you cover any of the crystals or orbs on it. So in other words, that card has to be connected without anything being covered. So that makes it a much trickier thing to obtain. So what I've got going on in here is much easier to do, being that I'm using multiple regular cards. But once a treasure comes into play, things get more interesting because you cannot overlap that card uh, or the crystals or the orbs there uh, if you want to actually obtain the treasure. All right, I'm going to attach this one like this. Very interesting, right? So we're trying to actually go ahead and build this out. This will actually work pretty good because if I get another card with a crystal, I can slot it in this way um, adjacent to this one and it would activate this particular orb, which would be one of the ones we need. And then we have the freedom to start building out over here as well. Let's go ahead and draw the next card to see what we get. We got one of these. Let's figure out where we can best use that. All right, check this out. We're gonna go ahead and slot this card right in like this, creating another pattern. Boom, just like that. This one correlates, this orb goes to the Ice Wolf. So we'll be taking a crystal here, putting it on this orb and activating this crystal set. There we go, we're not too and too bad here. And we'll go ahead now, take a quick look around, see how close we are. Oh wow, we're really, we would have been really close over here if we can cover things up. Oh, that is interesting. Also over here has got some stuff going on. So let's go ahead and pull the next card and see what we got. We got a three crystal and a one crystal. How are we gonna get this one in? I'm gonna slot in the next crystal that we just received like this. The next card off the top of the deck is this one. Let's figure out where to put it. I'm gonna slot this newest card that I just got, put it like this as we try to build towards activating that particular orb. I'm realizing really quickly that I might have got myself in a sticky situation here, not being able to activate this one. It's gonna be really tough. The only thing that I can think of that would work in order to activate that is if I get two of the exact type, but if I put it over top, I don't get the item. I might be able to activate an orb that's kind of sitting on top of another card, but being able to activate this particular orb in order to get this treasure it's seeming like almost an impossible task now because these are this one's already stuck in place and we already have this one here. I could change that by putting a card over top, which I might have to do. Um, but again, any cards that sit over top of the treasure you're trying to gain, you can't get. So I don't know if there's anything I can really do here. I might have built myself into a corner. So this is a really good example of how you can kind of build yourself out of not being able to get a treasure, basically. Uh, there may still be a way that I'm not seeing, but currently I believe with this particular configuration, I might be in trouble. Now, it doesn't stop me from winning or anything like that, but it definitely stops me from getting that treasure. So here's another card coming out. We gotta figure out where to put this one next. This last card that came out is absolutely perfect for what I needed. I can go like this, put it over top of that corner, and bam, just like that. Three of the same color, different shape. I get to activate the last unicorn orb like that. And this unicorn, I've literally just completed that creature. And you can see the cool combination here. And you know what's even cooler? I just realized by doing that, 
I just triggered another one on the opposite side for the Phoenix, which is the orange one. That's really cool. So this is where you can really be efficient. I guess I got lucky there with that pole and how I built that out. But uh, we've already got the unicorn taken care of, and now we also have the Phoenix Underways. That was a two for one. That's pretty awesome. The next card off the top of the deck is, ooh, this could be very, very useful. Let's figure out how to get this one in. So I can't do too, too much with this one, but I might as well start off trying to build something out here. This will give me the opportunity to go for a different color, different shape right there. We'll see how this pans out. I couldn't find anywhere else that I thought really made too much sense for that one. We're going to go ahead and draw the next one, and this is what we're dealing with. Let's find a spot for it. Awesome. There's a spot right here. I'll slide that in there. And that is going to go ahead and have another crystal, or the first crystal, I should say, coming off of the seahorse. So just like that, we've created another crystal set. Awesome. We'll continue on, draw the next card. What do we got? This combination. Oh, there's some options. So I wanted to show you guys that when I went ahead and I created enough crystal sets to actually free the unicorn, uh, I was able to push the unicorn up, signifying that I had freed it from the cavern, and I did that by creating those crystal sets you saw earlier. So having a unicorn uh, orb out here kind of starting off a tail doesn't really make too much sense. The one I pulled has a unicorn orb on it as well. I'm going to stuff that into the middle here. We're going to, again, we're always, no matter what, it's always the focus is connecting those crystals adjacent to each other, whether it be overlaying them onto another card or by doing it side by side. So this is a valid placement, plus it kind of keeps that unicorn uh, emblem inside where I'm not really going to use it all that much. And then over here, it begins to allow me to go after the seahorse and try to build some kind of crystal set over there. So let's go ahead and grab the next card and see what we get. This is what we're dealing with for the next puzzle piece. So I'm going to come to terms with the fact that I've really messed this up and I'm not going to be able to actually get that particular orb ignited anymore. Uh, the only other way that I could think of doing that is if I did something like this with this card, you know, lying it like this, then the question would be is can I get another card to sit over top of it? Technically, yes, I could actually. So I guess it's not a complete loss just yet. But how do I get? Oh, no, it's doable. That is actually doable. Never mind, we could potentially still make this happen because I've placed a card like this, which is valid based on the crystals. I could overlay another one that has a single crystal right here, and that would salvage me and allow me to actually activate the fairy. I did not know that. That's very interesting. So there's quite a bit of strategy here as you kind of dive further and further in this one in terms of options. So it's really, really cool. I'm liking this quite a bit. The next card to pull out is this one. Ah. It doesn't have the single red uh, crystal that I wanted, but I'm sure I can make use of this somehow. This last one I pulled, I'm going to go ahead and place like this. Again, kind of forcing the unicorn into the middle. Again, I don't know if there's any good strategy towards doing that, but my essential idea is that if I can push it towards the middle where I'm not really going to use it all that much anymore, then I can start branching out and building off the orbs that I actually do need to activate. So we'll go ahead and pull the next one here, and we've got ourselves, ooh, this is for the Phoenix and for the Seahorse, both of which which are useful and we got some interesting combinations of crystals here i should be able to make something here work and hopefully activate an orb this next card here that we just talked about i'm going to place right here and we're going to move on to the next one in the deck which is ooh, does not have as many options only a three crystal for yellow where can we use that? Awesome, that last card pull worked out perfectly. I can place it right in here, and we've just gone ahead and activated one from the fairy. Awesome. Next up, the next card is, oh, look at that, finally, some more treasure to add in, and this one is for the riches category, which is perfect, goes along with the coins we have at the bottom. So if we get the coins, we've now got the necklace out, and we need to find the crown later, hopefully. Uh, we also need to get these two orbs activated. Let's put this in a place where we can make that happen. All right, so we've got the item here. I'm going to go ahead and actually just connect this one just like this, kind of similar to what we did with the other item, building off and giving a separate area where I can start to try to succeed in activating those orbs. Now, I could have used the three crystals right here. Just a little bit south of this, there is a spot where I could have completed and activated a different orb, but it would have put this item in a position where it would have been very tough to uh, complete. So I didn't want to do that right now. We're going to hope to find uh, a three purple crystal later on in terms of shape. So the next card coming out, ah, not a three, it's a one. And then we got two of the symbols here that correlate to the ice wolf. Let's figure out how we can use these right now. 
I'm gonna place this newly acquired card just like this. And we're gonna hope in the future to put something kind of side by side over top. If we get a double purple and activate the Fire Emblem for the Firefox. And check out what I just pulled off the top of the deck. It's another treasure and it is part of the Riches line. So we literally have the three cards out of the nine that are for one of the lines, which works out perfect. It took a while to get there. I think we used almost half the deck. So uh, maybe I shuffled this really poorly, but I did do uh, all the different types of shuffling you can imagine to keep this deck mixed up. Uh, but for whatever reason there, it took a little bit longer to start finding those treasures, but now they're just starting to come out like crazy. We got to find a way to make use of this and put it in a spot where we can actually complete it. I should be able to find something to use these single crystals for. Maybe I can connect something. The newest card I'm going to place way over here so I can start building out towards obtaining that one as well. Next card to pull. Oh, interesting. We got some singles. We might be able to use those crystals. And this card will slot in just like this, giving us three different shapes and three different colors. Activating this right here, which is the fairy. Now with two orbs activated on the board. Going to the next card, we got... Ooh, interesting. So two... Oh, there's two red and one yellow. I'm pretty sure this will actually complete another one if I can find it. The card I just pulled, I thought I'd be able to complete a crystal set, but instead I'm going to actually place it up here as it builds towards hopefully completing this part of the crown, getting closer and closer to that. Plus it has a unicorn uh, orb on it, which I don't need anymore. So I might as well just kind of push it off to the side. I didn't have any use for this single um, orangish yellow crystal either. So we'll pull another one here. Oh, there's some more options. And we still, ah, this could work. Could it work? Is this what we needed? Yes, we finally needed the one red. We can now complete one of the fair, actually the last of the fairies and be able to release the fairy from the cavern. So that one was right here. And I thought this was kind of clever that I was able to actually build this one out because I had thought this was lost. And as you can see now, we've just activated the fairy and the fairy's card off screen will be pushed up. So we've got two of the six creatures released now and we also gain this coin treasure. So we still need to activate the pendant treasure as well as the crown treasure in order to get the abilities that we need. But we're gonna get some points for having this treasure at the end of the game. The next card that's going to come out will look like this. We have another item card to put into the fray. This isn't where it's going to go. I have to make up my mind though. This newly acquired treasure that I want to try and break into, I'm going to go ahead and connect it like this. Now I don't know how I'm going to actually be able to open that one, but I'm not really going to focus on it too, too much. I couldn't use either of those crystals in a really creative way that wasn't going to stop me from gaining other crystals in order to try to pass this first phase. So we're moving on to the next card and we got ourselves two yellow crystals and three red crystals. This could be useful. This next orb works out in our favor because we can place it just like this, creating a crystal set that not only gives us the bonus of being able to put an ice wolf orb to be activated, but we also get to halfway to getting this treasure. Now we just need to find a three purple uh, crystal on this side and we'll be able to obtain that crown. We already have the coins. Now we need to work on that pendant. So the next card coming out is this card right here, which is a perfect fit just like this, activating the other orb on the crown and also relates to the Firefox. We gained another treasure, completed another crystal set. We only have a total of two left on the seahorse, which is blue, one left on the ice wolf, which is light blue, two left on the Firefox, which is red, and two on the phoenix, which is orange. We're coming down to the final cards here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 cards to try and use in order to get seven of these orbs activated or we fail. So we're gonna come very, very close. And I either was extremely efficient at the beginning with this wonderful uh, square quadrant up here and then things kind of got a little off the rails or we're gonna be able to just get in there and win. So let's go ahead and reveal the next card and see what we got. Ah, uh, of course it would be an item, so, or a treasure, I call them items all the time. But we got some useful um, crystal shards on either side, so hopefully I can find some way to make this thing activate right away. Yes, I did find a spot to place this one right here like this. This will allow me to activate this particular crystal set, allowing me to take one from the Phoenix. Now we only need one more on the Phoenix to release it. And as you can see, based on how I place this one, it does overlap at times with other cards. That's okay, as long as remember, you're not overlapping cards that have crystals that are in use for the orb they activated so I'm still okay there that was still a legal placement I did adjoin two crystals no problem 
All right, and when I say two crystals, I mean just two actual crystals, not the number of crystals that are actually shown there in the icon that I continually refer to throughout this. So, next card in play is this one here. We want to try to make this one count, so hopefully I need three crystals that are red somewhere on this board. Now I got really excited here because I was sitting there thinking I could just slot this over just like this and that is another legal one that I could have created but I've already released the fairy so I'm going to gain absolutely nothing by doing that. So what really hurts is the fact that I really have a card here that's more of a burned card and I'm basically going to have to place this in a way that's going to help me to gain a set later on using the three uh, shaped crystal that we have here. So I'm going to try to find a place to put this that will set me up potentially to activate another orb that actually do need whether it be a light blue blue orange or red and wouldn't you know it just by looking a little bit harder i found another spot for it i'm going to go ahead and slot this thing in just like this which is going to activate this one which is the phoenix which is the final one we needed to release the phoenix so the phoenix is now going to be pushed up we are halfway there in terms of the number of released creatures we now only have five more crystals to get on the board we have one for the ice wolf two for the firefox and two for the seahorse and we are down to probably our last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. We're doing really good so far. We might be able to pull this out. The next card off the top of the deck is this one. Again, another tough one where we're going to have to try to make use. But the good news is this can actually be used by a seahorse. So a seahorse is, has two crystals that I do need to get out of that creature card. So I can hopefully try to find somewhere here to put this purple three that's going to help me. And I think... Mm, I think I might have found something. Oh yeah, I got a spot for this one. I'm going to place this one over top just like this. And that is going to set up another crystal uh, set. And this again is relating back to the seahorse. So there's another crystal there. Doing really good in these last few uh, cards here. Maybe it's just how I've set things up. But I've got a really tightly knit combination of stuff going on here the next card coming out is on uh, this is going to be good because this will give us options we don't need the phoenix one to be activated anymore but we do still need the ice wolf so this one is going to be interesting can we use this purple and this orb in a way that might generate us the last uh, orb activation for the ice wolf to release the ice wolf now this is a pretty safe bet if i go ahead and place this one just like this I've basically built towards potentially unlocking the last Ice Wolf Orb. I just need a single purple one, so we can only hope and dream. Next card off the top. Oh my gosh, I got it. I got it. So I can go ahead even just like this, and I've completed that particular set. So the Ice Wolf now has a shard here, and it has been freed. We are literally down to just the Seahorse with one crystal and the Firefox with two. We have only five cards remaining. The next card in line is this one. Now this is good on the standpoint that the two crystals for purple are near the Fire Emblem, which is one of the ones we need to uh, activate to get one of the uh, crystals off the Firefox. So here's hoping I can find a spot to put it. All right, I found a spot for it. It's really, really tight, but it'll work because this particular crystal orb is using these crystals here and I'm not covering any of them by doing this. And also I, this is a legal placement because I'm covering the corner over here and I am gonna be actually touching uh, crystals together so I'm really setting myself up here for a really cool combination because I've left this open um, we'll have to see because I might be able to place a card right here going off this way that would be the opposite color and shape so basically for this to work it would need to be a, a yellow single crystal uh, but it's kind of a gamble based on how I've got things going here though that actually is my best option so let's go ahead and pull the next card you've got to be kidding me that is so cool. Okay, so this is exactly what I was trying to set up and it worked, I think, perfectly. Yeah, you can actually go just like this. And because that, that is a legal move as well, and just like that, we activate one of the Firefox crystals. Sweet, okay, two more to go, and we're down to three cards. I'm a little terrified here because I really hope I have enough set up to make this work. The next card is, oh, this is going to give me lots of options, but it's a little scary because both of the emblems are not emblems I need at this moment. I need more of the, I need to activate an orb that is a, 
uh, fire emblem or the water seahorse emblem. But these two crystals could help me to do that, so let's figure out where we can use them. So I wanna show you guys how crazy close this is coming down to the wire. There are literally only three orbs left that relate back to the seahorse that I haven't put into play yet. Now I might get a card that might allow me to put a water one in, play an orb, uh, but as of right now, I only have three to work with. That's this one right here, which is buried so much in the middle that I couldn't even get a card in there even if I wanted to. Um, I could overlap cards, so I shouldn't say that I can make that happen. But the difficulty of that is it's extremely hard with the number of crystals uh, or orbs that are activated around it and the crystals are using, I can't overlap crystals in use. So that makes getting to this one extremely tough. So the only ones that really make sense at this point are these two. This one here gives me no benefit to go towards it. This one, at least if I activate this one, I not only get to free the seahorse, but I also get points for the emblem if I can activate this opposite side which ends up being for a unicorn that I've already freed. So I'd be going after something that's not gonna help me win, but just for bonus points. So that's not really a priority right now. So I have to go after this thing. Don't really have much choice, but this was the card I was given as you saw earlier. So I have to find a way to really make this work. So I'm gonna be working off of this card and trying to find a way to somehow create something and then hope the card I need comes up. It's gonna be quite a gamble. So I basically have a choice here as to whether or not I wanna connect this thing, maybe something like this, so that I'm one step away from activating and just hope I get the right one I need, or flipping it around and doing this. So really it comes down to, do I think that I'm gonna get the three crystal red, or do I think that if I do it this way, I'll get the two crystal yellow. Uh, which one's out more? Well, I can see visually, even though a lot of these things are overlapping each other, visually I can see seven yellow uh, two crystals. Uh, but in terms of the red three crystal clusters, I can see six. So again, don't know if that's even accurate because a lot of stuff is overlapping. I'd have to actually like dig into this to see uh, what my odds are. And I'd also have to know the odds off the top of my head, which I don't. So it's kind of a gamble and we're right down to the wire, but I don't know which way to go. I'm kind of feeling like I should go with this and go with the three red and hope to get the cluster of red that I need and just hope that pans out. It's a huge risk but I'm gonna go for it because I couldn't see anywhere else that I could have used that. Now you guys might have seen something, but I can't currently. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the next card. <laughs> You've got to be joking me. That is so awesome. Okay, so now I'm really stressed out. So we're gonna put this one like this. That is going to complete the seahorse and it's one away from not getting the emblem, which I know I'm just not gonna have a chance to get. I only have one card left. Literally, it comes down to whether or not we can activate an orb to free the Firefox. If we do, we get to continue to phase two against the dragon. If we don't, we fail. So it comes right down to the wire. So what is this last card? Oh, wow. So that's a good one to get. Uh, bad that we couldn't get the treasure in the end likely, but we do have some options with the two yellow or the two red on the shape of the crystal. So I'm hoping I can find somewhere where I can activate in a red symbol. And I do wanna show you guys the amount of red symbols on the board before I start figuring out where I can put this. So what I've done is I've actually put the camera at an angle where you can see absolutely every fire orb available. There's quite a few of them. There's like one here, there's one here, here, here. There's one off to the side over here. Uh, there's one down here. So there's a few, there's a few that we could work off of. Some of them are actually in better areas than others. Uh, but I'm gonna try to see if I can make this work. Giving you a good glance of the board because you might end up seeing something that I miss and you might be screaming at the screen because I don't see it, but I'm gonna start looking right now to hopefully find a way to make this last card fit. You guys are not gonna believe this and I literally freaked out when I found it. There is a spot where this actually works. I can slide it in just like this. It's crazy, and because this particular orb is using only these crystals here, remember you can share crystals, I can share crystals with this particular orb, which then now has a full set of twos. So literally on the last card, we were able to help all six creatures escape. All of them have been pushed up and we actually completed phase one. That was an absolute blast. I absolutely love the tension of this game and the crazy amount of combinations that you can kind of come up with to make this work. So here guys is the section right here talking about trapping the black dragon. Of course, after you go ahead and succeed during the first phase, it says if you have freedom, 
defeat all the creatures, you may now attempt to trap the black dragon in his own lair. If you have any cards left over freeing the creatures, add them to the stack. So basically, if I hadn't burnt my entire deck trying to get all those creatures freed, I could add the cards I still have to the deck of nine, I believe, that we separated earlier on, which is this deck right here, which is going to be a deck that we're going to use towards trying to take and trap this black dragon. We clear the play area, gathering the gems in a pile, place any collected treasure cards to the side face up, shuffle remaining cavern cards, place this deck to the side, stack and set aside the creature cards. Next, we turn the black dragon cards face up and place them at the top of the play area, replacing the creature cards. Take your stack of nine reserve cards, and or nine plus, but nine for me, and turn them all face up in front of you. And that is going to conclude this Kickstarter preview of Cristallo. I really hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the game. Hopefully it gives you a good idea of what to expect when this thing lands on Kickstarter for May 1st. Really excited for this one. Again, it's always nice to have these solo games that are small sized and don't cost a ton but have so much gameplay inside of them. I really like the design of this one. It's really clever. There's lots of thought and half the time when I pulled a card it took me a few minutes to figure out where was the best and most optimal place to put my card. Of course if you're just playing this off the cuff quickly uh, you might not be able to get the best structure and come out with a victory like I barely did by the skin of my teeth at the end of this. One thing that I will say is that when the Kickstarter does launch in May, what I'll do is maybe at that particular time, I'll do a follow-up video where we'll move into part two of Cristalla, where we talk about how we're going to trap the Black Dragon. We'll basically continue on and see whether or not it's possible that I can pull this off. But for now, this will give you a good enough look at the gameplay, the mechanics, and how this thing flows, looks, and feels. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo. Rolling solo.